Welcome to the Mathematics in the Modern World subject. Let's start this by defining what is mathematics. Mathematics is the science that deals with the logic of shape, quantity, and arrangement. It is the science of structure, order, and relation that has evolved from elemental practices of counting, measuring, and describing the shapes of objects. So where is mathematics? Mathematics can be found everywhere. Science, business, the arts, and nature all contain elements of mathematics. Now, let's talk about the, class, the characteristics of mathematics. So there are eight characteristics of mathematics. is our classification, logical sequence, structure, abstract, applicability, mathematical language and symbolism, precision and accuracy, and generalization. Let's discuss this one by one. Now, let's talk about classification. Classification generates a series of mental relations through which objects are grouped according to similarities and differences depending on a specific criteria such as shape, color, size, etc. Next is the logical sequence. Ideas in mathematics need to flow in an order that makes sense. So mathematics has order. It is a chaos or disorder. It must flow in a logical order, just like the setting up an aquarium. What is the first thing that you need to do? Next, then, and the last. Now, next is the structure. The structure in a mathematical set will allow mathematicians to study the set further and find its relationship with other objects. So mathematics has a structure. Mathematics is not alone. Its ideas always have relationship with other objects. Just like, for example, before the 3 times 2 becomes 6, it has a relationship with addition, which is 3 plus 3 is equal to 6. Now, let's talk about precision and accuracy. So what is the difference between precision and accuracy? So when you see accuracy, it is how close a measured value is to the total actual values. And you say precision is how close the measured value are to each other. So look at this illustration. So this shows the accuracy. How close are these pins to the target? And this one is the precision. How close are these pins to each other? So that is the difference between precision and the accuracy. Now let's talk about mathematical language and symbolism. So it is used by, this is the system used by mathematicians to communicate mathematical ideas using symbols instead of words. So instead of writing everything in words, mathematici mathematicians use symbols. So imagine mathematics without symbols or written word. Diba, my God, mas nakakanusulid na lalo ang mat niyan. So now let's talk about the abstract. Abstraction is the process of extracting underlying essence of mathematical concept by taking away any dependence on a real world object. It deals with quantitative relations and spatial form and their interrelationship with one another. So look at this painting. It is abstract. Do you know what does this painting means? Even I, I do not know. I will know it once I have idea about the author, his characteristics, his personality, his ideologies. Somehow, I will know or have idea about the painting. Same with mathematics, it is abstract, it is broad. We commonly ask ourselves when can we apply the X and Ys. We, op we often say that mathematics is useless, just a waste of time, but it is not. We should extract the underlying essence so we can appreciate mathematics. Next is the applicability. The applicability of mathematics can lie anywhere on a spectrum from Completely simple to utterly complex. Mathematics can be used in all fields of human endeavor. So application lies anywhere. We need to know what are our necessity or needs for mathematics. The needs for math of jeepney drivers is not the same with the need for mathematics of engineers, of accountants, of doctors, or of any other fields. So each one of us has our own need for mathematics. Now, next is the generalization. 
It is the process of finding and singling out of properties in a whole class of similar objects, just like this, the eye doctor, the dentist, the cardiologist. Generally, they are called as doctor. Now, how about this real number system or the number system? The natural numbers, the whole numbers, the integers, the fractions, they are all rational. The rational and the irrational, they are all real. And the real numbers and the imaginary numbers, generally, they are all called as numbers. Now, let's talk about the nature of mathematics. So there are six, the science of, of measures, an intuitive method, a to the subject, a system of logical procedures, an intellectual game, the art of drawing conclusion. So a science of measures. Measurement is an integral part of modern science as well as of engineering, commerce, and daily life. Example, average weight of garbage from a community, the kilowatt usage of electricity of a household. So measuring is a part of our daily life. Next is an intellectual game. So requires significant intelligence and cognitive effort, discovering patterns, and visualization. Next is the art of drawing conclusions. Reasoning, of course, you need to show your proof and generalize. Next is a tool subject. Mathematics is applied in the fields of engineering, theoretical, and applied physics, astronomy, aeronautics, architecture, geology, and genetic survey. So just like this feature, without mathematics, probably we don't have this. Okay. Next is a system of logical procedure. This is the problem solving, finding the solution. Where is the solution? When can we find the solution? Or when is the solution? How can we get the solution? What is the solution? Who is the solution? Why is this the solution? Okay, let's talk about mathematics as a science of patterns. This connotes order, regularity, and lawfulness. It's, it may be natural or man-made. So patterns of counting, measuring, reasoning, motion, and etc. So are you familiar with Fibonacci sequence? So Fibonacci sequence is a set of numbers that starts with one or a zero followed by a one that, and proceeds based on the rule that each number is equal to the sum of the preceding two numbers. So the rule is this. So the two ones, so one, one, to get the next number in the sequence, we just need to add this. One plus one is two. To get the three, the next number in the sequence, just add one, two, to get three. 2 plus 3, 5, 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, so on and so forth. Let's say 144 plus 233 is 377. So that is the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, this is also uh, applies in the squares. This measure, so this one is 1 by 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 square units, then 2 plus 1 is 3 square units, 3 plus 5 is 8, 8 plus 5 is 13, 13 plus 8 is 21, 21 plus 13, this bigger one is 34, the bigger one is 55. How do we get 55? 34 plus 21. So the application of Fibonacci sequence is present around, just like this, hurricane or the typhoon. Its structure is governed by Fibonacci sequence. Another one is the sunflower. The arrangement of its seeds is also governed or governed by the Fibonacci sequence, the galaxy, the nautilus cells, and many more. Now, are you familiar with this? The golden ratio or the phi. So the golden ratio is the ratio between two consecutive digits of Fibonacci series is close to the golden ratio 1.618. So it is also known as the gold, uh, the divine proportion. It is actually taken from the Fibonacci sequence. 
21, so on and so forth. So what is the idea of the golden ratio? So dividing, no, this is the ratio of two consecutive digits of Fibonacci series or sequence. So just like this. So the five, so one, one, two, three. So the three is divided by two. So the five is divided by three. The eight is divided by five. The 13 is divided by eight. The 21 is divided by 13. So the, the ratio is close to this 1.618. So just like the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio is also present in nature. So just like this, in this flower. So this is the, the illustration. So this is the, gold, the, the Fibonacci sequence and this is the golden ratio. When you compute this, this is, close, uh, this is equal to 1.618. And this one is another example. Thank you.